So an experiment was performed where a cricket ball was ejected from a bowling machine set at increasing velocities, while the distance the ball travelled along the ground was measured. A linear regression was performed in MATLAB to establish whether there was a linear relationship between velocity, our independent variable, because that's the one we're controlling, and the distance, which is our dependent variable, because that's the one we're measuring at the end. So MATLAB output uh, is shown down here, and we're going to use this to answer a couple of questions. So the first question is asking us about the relationship between velocity and distance and whether it's significant given a 5% uh, level of significance to make that decision. So coming down to our MATLAB output, uh, we can see here we've been given our linear regression model. Now, I would prefer to write that slightly differently. My preference would be for this kind of notation. So what I've got here is y, my dependent variable, is equal to b0, which is just a constant, plus b1 times x1. So x1 is our independent variable. B1 is kind of like the gradient that's going to be associated with that. Um, you can also call it like the coefficient. So if you have um, a simple regression like we have here, this kind of looks like your regular equation of a straight line, which you're probably more familiar with y equals mx plus c. So c is just this b0 and m is equal to this b1. Now the reason that I would write it in this way rather than mx plus c um, is because you can actually extend this to further terms if you have more than one independent variable. So I could have like on the end here plus b2x2 plus b3x3 and, and so on. But we're keeping it simple, we just have the one uh, independent variable. So if I now relate the y and the x to the actual variables that we're looking at in our equation, we were actually told which one's which, um, but the independent is going to be velocity and the dependent is going to be distance. So we can write this as distance equals some constant, which is bo, plus b1, another constant or coefficient, uh, multiplied by the velocity. Okay, so we're looking at a relationship between velocity and distance. And within this equation here, um, the key to determining whether there's a relationship is going to be this b1 value, okay? Because you can imagine if this b1 was equal to zero, then basically this whole term is going to drop out and we'd say that distance is just equal to b0, okay? No relationship to velocity. However, if b1 is actually um, a number, okay, bigger or smaller than zero, uh, then we are going to have a dependence of um, distance onto velocity. You can also kind of think about it if you draw yourself a little graph between distance and velocity. If b1 is equal to zero, all you're going to find is that this looks like a flat line. Okay, again, there's no dependence. It doesn't matter what the velocity is, you're always going to get the same distance out. However, we'll use a different color, if we end up with the slope line happening, let's say it slopes up, then we can see that, okay, depending on what velocity value we pick here, we do end up with a different uh, distance coming out. Okay, so there's definitely a relationship. So MATLAB does this test for us, okay, this is kind of what this t stat is, it's the test static that it gets out, and it ends up returning a p-value. So in order to interpret this, we need to know what our null hypothesis and our alternate hypotheses are. So I'm going to pop it down here. So this is for part A. So HO is the null hypothesis. That's the boring one, all right, maintaining the status quo, nothing really to see here. So in this case, the boring hypothesis is going to be that B1, okay, this constant or coefficient uh, is equal to zero because that means there is no relationship, nothing interesting happening. The alternate is the opposite, okay, so that's going to be that b1 does not equal zero, which means it's going to be a line either sloping upwards or sloping downwards, depending on whether it's positive or negative. So we go ahead and test this, and that's what MATLAB's doing, and we need to look in the x1 uh, section, okay, because that's the independent variables uh, coefficient. And we look across and we see, okay, this was the test static that it got back, and this is the p-value it returned. So we can see that the p-value is extremely small for this test. It's 2.79 by 10 to the negative seven. So really, really, really incredibly small. 
So now we just need to look at this in the context of our um, significance level, which was 5% as we were given. So remember that if your p-value is less than the alpha, okay, or your level of significance, that means that you have um, the ability to reject the null hypothesis. Whereas if you have the opposite case, so your p-value is greater than the alpha value, then you can't reject HO. It's just not enough evidence. So in this case, we have a p-value which is much, much less than alpha. Okay, Alpha is 5%, or if you put it in decimal form, 0 0.05. So therefore, we're definitely sitting in this um, one here. So that means that we're going to reject our null hypothesis, uh, which is that B1 is equal to zero. Instead, B1 is definitely equal to something. And in fact, we can figure out what that is. All right, this one here is our estimate for what uh, B1 actually is. So what I'm going to say is we're rejecting HO, which means that there is a relationship between them. I'll put between uh, y and x1, or in other words, between the distance and the velocity. All right, so I'll highlight that. And let's now have a look at the next part. So the next bit is asking us if there's evidence to reject that the intercept is zero. So if we're talking about the intercept, it's going to be the b0 in our equation, okay? Just like in y equals mx plus c, c is the y-intercept. So what we're looking at this time is whether b0 is equal to zero or whether it's not. And it's pretty much uh, following the same pattern as what we did a moment ago. So I'll put b here. So our null hypothesis is the boring one, which is where b0 is equal to zero. H1, our alternate, is going to be the opposite. So again, MATLAB goes through and calculates a p-value for this test. And if we look at our um, output, it's related to the intercept line, which kind of makes sense. And the p-value we get out is 0 0.265 approximately. So we have the same kind of decision rule as to whether we're going to reject uh, HO. So looking at it this time, we've got a p-value of 0.26, which is going to be bigger um, than our alpha value, okay? Assuming that we're using the same alpha as before, so 0 0.05. So this time we have, um, yeah, p-value greater than alpha, so we can't reject the null hypothesis, okay? So I'll put p-value um, greater than alpha. So that means we can't reject HO. Um, so therefore, we're pretty much accepting it, um, which means that BO is essentially equal to zero. All right, we just don't have enough evidence to say otherwise. Um, and I guess this p-value, you can kind of think of it as being the um, chance of this result happening as a coincidence. So if we collected all this data, there's a 26.5% chance um, that B0 would be equal to zero, all right? It's not particularly convincing that it should be something else, okay? So the last bit here um, is part C. We need to comment on how well the model fits the data. So the main uh, value that we're looking for in our output is this R squared value, okay? So we can see down here, um, it's 0 0.897. So this R squared value has the ability to change between zero and one, okay? So at the moment, you've got it as 0 0.897, and that's much closer to one than it is to zero. So all it's doing is measuring kind of the error between all these little points that we have um, as our data and the line of best fit that you put through them. So it's gonna be adding up all of these errors, the difference between your point and where the line actually sits. So if you end up with a value of zero for R squared, that means it's a terrible model, all right? The line of best fit is just nowhere near the points. If you end up with a value for one for R squared, that means it's like a perfect model. 
um, every single point is sitting exactly on the line. So in reality, you're pretty much going to get a number between these two, and the closer you are to 1, the better. So here we've got a value that's pretty close to 1, so I would say that it's um, a good fit, uh, the model onto the data. So that's pretty much all there is uh, in terms of this video.